Let's go through all of the AWS offerings to implement CI/CD as part of the DevOps journey. So what is CI/CD? CI/CD stands for continuous integration and then continuous delivery or deployment. So let's start with continuous integration. The way it works, the developer push the code to a code repository. It could be anything like GitHub, code commit or Bitbucket. As soon as the code is pushed, there will be a testing or build server to perform checks on the code. This ensures that the code can be built and is tested correctly. But why do we do this? Because developer gets feedback about the test and checks to see if they have passed and failed. It helps them improve the code quality. They can find bugs early and can fix them early as well. This way we can also deliver code faster because it is tested continuously and it can be deployed often. As a result, we have happier developers because they are unblocked and free to focus on other innovative developments because they don't have to run their builds and test again and again on the test environment. They just push the code to a code repository and then build server will do the heavy job of testing for them. Now, Let's look at the continuous delivery. We want to make sure that whenever the software is built, it can be released reliably whenever we need it. And we want to make sure that the deployments happen often and are quick because we want to be more agile and want to move away from doing one release every three months to doing three releases a day. And that you can only do if you have something called continuous delivery, which means that the deployment will be fully automated. So this is what a continuous delivery pipeline look like. We have our developers who push the code often, and then the build server will get the code, build it and test it. And then the deployment server will get the build and will deploy successful builds to the application server so they can upgrade an application from version 1 to version 2. So this is the idea behind continuous delivery. As I mentioned earlier, CD refers to continuous delivery or continuous deployments. So let's compare the differences between these two. Continuous delivery means that you can deploy often using automation. But it may involve a manual step. For example, if you need to approve a deployment, usually just before production deployment, you may need to get it manually approved from a project manager. So you would use a manual step while setting up continuous delivery. Even though there is a manual step in here, the deployment itself is still automated and can be repeated. So continuous delivery has a lot of advantages. Continuous deployment, on the other hand, is entirely automated, which means that every code change you will do in your source repository will be deployed all the way to the production. That means there is no manual intervention of approvals. This is something can be implemented with a lot of monitoring and if there is a bug, you can just push a new code fix into your repository. And then it makes it all the way through the end of the pipeline. Okay, so now let's check how the CI/CD stack looks into AWS. These are the steps you can do in CI/CD. You can have a source repo where you can stage your code. For source code, we will use code commit or we can also use GitHub or any other third party repository. Then for building and testing, you could use AWS code build or you can also use a third party plugin like Jenkins CI. Now for deploying the application, we will use code deploy. Code deploy does not provision any infrastructure for us. So for provisioning, we can use AWS CloudFormation or Elastic Beanstalk. And finally, to orchestrate everything, you could use AWS Code Pipeline. 
and it's very interesting to use code pipeline to automate the build test and deploy phases of your release process every time there is a code change because it enables you and your team to rapidly and reliably deliver features and updates the result of using ci cd is an established and more robust process for your project phases so let's start with code commit a version control is the ability to understand the various changes that happen to the code over time the key to version control is that you should be able to roll back to the commits and all of these can be enabled using a version control system and a very popular one is called git a git repository can live on any individual's machine but it can also live in a central online repository and these repositories can be for example github or aws code commit the benefits of having a centralized repository is that you can collaborate with other developers and you can make sure that the code is backed up somewhere and it is fully viewable and auditable and you can also roll back at any point in time so this is where code commit comes in so code commit works like that developers push their code often to a repository and it can be very expensive the industry has several players who offers free public repositories like github bitbucket etc they offer free public and paid private repositories and then we have aws code commit it is a private git repository for your aws account there is no size limit on the repository so you can scale seamlessly and it is fully managed highly available service from aws and the code lives on your aws cloud account so you have increased security and compliance and it's integrated with other services in aws such as jenkins code build and other ci tools let's create our first repository using service aws code commit i will name it as ci cd repo we can also define description and tags here but these are optional so we can simply click on create and here you go your repository is successfully created but if you notice this warning here that you are signed in using a root account you cannot configure ssh connections for a root account and https connections for a root account are not recommended consider signing in as an iam user and then setting up your connection so that's true we don't want to compromise our credentials so why don't we just go and create an iam user for our code commit repository so here i am on iam dashboard go to users add users and give some username let's say ci cd user and i am giving it both programmatic as well as management console access and it will be having auto generated password and that will be required to be reset at the first login so now it is asking me to add this user to a group so why don't we just create a new group of administrators let's call it admin and add administrator access to this rest everything we can leave default and click on create user so it has created a user and these are the credentials for this user so let's download this csv with these credentials which contains access key id secret access key and password so now we have created iam user for our code commit repository so now we are into bit more secure space now if you click on to this ci cd user and check security credentials so you will see that apart from access keys which we have just downloaded we have two more options ssh keys for aws code commit and https git credentials for aws code commit so these are the two ways to connect to your code commit repository 
So we will set up HTTPS credentials for our repository. But if you want, you can also set up SSH keys for your repository. So let's generate credentials for our Git repository. All right. So now we have set up our Git credentials for this IAM user. Now let's set up our code commit repository. So the goal here is to take all these scripts available in this CI CD demo folder, which I have downloaded from my O1O3B branch. And you can also download the same to follow along. And for this, we will use the command line. So make sure that you have pre-installed Git on your local machine. So if we just go to our command line, I am into the CI/CD demo folder. If we just try to list the files, we can see these are the files available into this folder. And these files we want to upload to our code commit repository. So for this, we need to do a clone. And cloning a repository means copying whatever is in here. And as we know, like currently we have nothing in this repository. It is an empty repository because we have just created this. But we will still clone this in order to initialize it at our local machine. So if we go to this clone URL and click on clone HTTPS, it will copy this URL and go to the command prompt and say git clone and then paste the URL which we have just obtained. So it has given the warning like you appear to have cloned an empty repository and that's perfectly fine because we know we have just created this repository. So if you try to list the content here, now you notice that we have got this folder here. Let's go to this folder and check the content. So here it is empty folder. There is nothing in it. So we have initialized it successfully. So now we have established our connectivity into our repository and using HTTPS. And now we want to push code to this repository. Now let's add some code to this repository. To do that, I am going to copy all these script files here into this repository. So now if you go back to the command line and check git status, you can see that all these files are here, but these are untracked files. And in order to make these trackable by git, we need to use a command git add. So we can say git add or I can provide like a specific file name, let's say index.html or since I have multiple files and I want to add all these files in one go, I can simply have a dot here. So it will add all the files to my repository. And if we check the git status again, we can see that yes, uh, these changes are now ready to be committed. And to commit that, the command is git commit. And it is always a good practice to give some message with your commit. So we can use hyphen m and then since I am committing these files for the first time, let's say first commit. So you should always provide some meaningful message here so you can recognize it later that exactly what changes you have committed. So now we have committed these files to our repository. But if we go back to our repository and check the contents of repository, it is still empty. The reason is because we have committed these changes, but we have committed at our 
local machine. In order to be available at the central repository, we need to push these changes to the upstream repository. And to push these changes, the simple command is git push. So it has pushed the changes to our repository. Now let's go back and refresh. So now we can see these files available here at our remote repository. So if we check the commits, we can see there is a message first commit and it has been done one minute ago. So by default, these files are committed to a default branch master. This master is the primary branch for your code commit repositories. So with code commit, you can have any number of files in the repository and it also makes it easy for teams to collaborate on the code in a secure and highly scalable ecosystem. Now that we understand the importance of branching, having a CI-CD branching strategy can help your teams integrate code easier and find bugs before they are released to production. Let's go ahead and create a new branch in our repository to see branching in action. We can also create new branch via CLI and the command is git checkout hyphen b and then branch name. Let's call it feature 1. So it has created a new branch feature 1 and also switched the path to this feature 1 branch. So now you can see that here we were working on our main branch. But now we have checked out to our feature 1 branch. Now let's go ahead and make further changes to our index.html. Let's say this time we are making it v3. So the process is going to be the same that first of all, we will check the status. Yes, it recognized the change and then we need to add this change. Then we need to commit and we will say revised index to v3. And now we need to push the changes. But if you notice here that our push has failed, it says the current branch feature 1 has no upstream branch. To push the current branch and set the remote as upstream, we need to use this command which is little longer than earlier. The reason is that we have created this branch to our local repository. And this branch itself does not exist on our remote repository. So if we use this command, it will create a branch there on git repository and push this code to this branch. So let's check to see exactly what has happened. So go to the branches and refresh this. So here we can see that one more branch called feature one has been created at our git repository. Now let's check the content of index.html onto this feature one branch. So it should say v3. So let me look for the word welcome here. Yeah, so this is on v3. So that's perfect. Now let's check the content of index.html in main branch as well. So here it is on v2. So this is how we have not changed anything to the main branch, but we are working on our feature one branch. This concept might look little difficult in the beginning, but it is very, very important and it will really save you from a lot of mess which happens due to the conflicts. So this is how multiple developers can work on multiple feature branches, keeping the main branch intact. Now, let's say if I'm happy with this version of code in feature one branch and I want to push it back to the main branch, how do we do that? 
So to merge the code of the branches, there is a concept of creating pull request. So here it asks for the destination. So let's say this main branch is our destination and source will be our feature one branch. We will compare and it says there are no conflicts and it is mergeable code. Give some meaningful title. Let's say merge feature one and click on create pull request. So this pull request gives you the opportunity to notify other developers or your delivery manager that I have made these changes into this code. If you are happy, please approve it to get it merged with the main branch. So they can review the pull request and they can check the activity and can see that exactly what you have changed. So they can see that okay earlier it was v2 and now you have changed it to v3. So if they are happy, they can approve this pull request. So if as a reviewer, you are happy with the changes your teammate has done, you can go ahead and merge these changes. While merging, you will get these three options. Don't worry about these options right now. We'll go ahead with the default first one. And this is the important setting here. So by default, it has ticked the delete source branch. So after merging, our source branch that is feature one will be deleted. If you want to keep your feature one branch even after merging, you can simply uncheck this and click on merge pull request. So it has been merged successfully. So now let's go back to the branches and verify this. So as you can see, now we are able to see only one branch because we opt to delete our feature one branch after merging. So let's check the index.html. So after merging, it is on v3. So that's perfect. And now we have merged those feature one changes to this main branch. So a good branching strategy like feature branching can help development teams move fast. It can orchestrate parallel development allowing developers to work on tasks simultaneously as part of a team. 